Amazon delivery service partners are hiring full-time delivery drivers to meet growing customer demand. Receive compensation of at least $20 per hour at select stations, plus benefits, and a sign-on bonus of $1,000 from participating DSPs if you apply now. No delivery experience required. Must be 21 years or older. Terms apply. Apply today at Amazon.com forward slash driver. That's Amazon.com forward slash driver. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Guardian of the flame that flickers and flares here seven times each week. The incredibly sophisticated jet crashes. The absolutely safe luxury liner founders. The beautifully engineered bridge collapses. The reason can be picky almost paltry. The malfunction of a part that might cost all of 22 cents could destroy a machine worth millions. A simple but undetected mathematical error might insidiously multiply itself to a point where a magnificent structure suddenly becomes a heap of ruin and rubble. Or uh, perhaps what we're talking about is beyond science. Our mystery drama, Fireball, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Kim Hunter. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. We assume that we are superior to the other members of the animal kingdom. We believe that we are more intelligent. After all, look at what we can do. Certainly, Animals can't read, write, build, manufacture. And if they can't, how does it happen that we can? We like to say that man is blessed with a divine spark. If, if this is true, that can only mean that God or the gods speak through us. And our works are expressions of their will. Benjamin Cantwell, or Big Ben, as he is known in industrial and government circles, comes home one evening. Louise? Is that you, Benjamin? Who are you expecting? I wasn't expecting you. Why not? You know perfectly well that days, even weeks, go by without ever seeing Now, you. Louise, you know it's necessary for me I to... I didn't say it wasn't necessary. Then why are you complaining? I wasn't aware that I was complaining. I merely stated a fact. Since you're not home more often than you are home, then your very presence is a surprise. Would you like me to begin all over again? I'll try to spend more time at home, but what I'm doing is important. The very fate of our country rests on it. I didn't say no. The fate of the entire free world. I'd like a little sympathy and understanding for my own wife. You can have all the sympathy and understanding you want. It's not my fault you're hardly ever home to collect it. Well... I'm home now. And it's only Friday. Don't tell me, we're actually going to spend a weekend together? You know, I couldn't wait to get home here to the country. Well, well, guests start to arrive tomorrow. Admiral Lawrence and his wife will be coming later tonight. And Senator Sullivan and his, uh, well, I assume she's his wife. And... and here I thought we were going to have a quiet little weekend. Well, it won't be more than eight or ten, all told. Thanks for telling me now. Louise, you don't understand. I'm having some important people here because... You're always important. Well, you know who I invite. Senator Sullivan is chairman of the Military Appropriations Committee. Admiral Lawrence... Oh, decide... darling, I'm impressed. 
I'm not saying all this to impress you. I want you to know who these people are. Why? So I can defer to them? No. So that you can discuss things intelligently. What are we supposed to discuss? It's all top secret. Oh, I give up. No, Ben, I'd like to understand what it is we're supposed to discuss. After all, the reason you invite them is always to sell them something. That's not true. I'm not here to sell. You aren't? I'm here to help them understand our country's true need in defense materiel. And of course... Since your products best satisfy those needs... This is an inference they are free to make. After you have wined them and dined and entertained them... Why do you insist on making it sound so... so disreputable? Then please admit it. The fact is, everything you manufacture is used to kill somebody. That is completely unfair. Somebody has to do it. Darling, all I'm doing is stating a fact. Why don't you look around at all the charities, the hospitals that I have endowed? Oh, I must say you have it down to a science. First, you manufacture the means to maim people. And then you tenderly care for the victims. Oh, Ben, you're not all bad. Before you accuse me of fattening on human misery, examine your own conscience. At least I don't drape myself in a mantle of pious hypocrisy. I fully expect to be punished. By whom? Oh, the gods. Louise, you have to take the world as you find it. Mankind, for reasons I'll never understand, insists on destroying itself. If I didn't make the means with which to do it, someone else would. Yes? You, uh, you said I was to come back tonight after supper, ma'am, to meet the mister. Oh, yes, uh, yes, Mr. Vulcan. Ben, this is Mr. Joseph Vulcan. I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Cantwell. Mr. Vulcan is our new blacksmith. Summers recommended him. Oh. And had you ever worked for Mr. Summers? Uh, no, sir. Uh, Dick Summers uh, worked for me. Is that so? Well... You're a much younger man. <laughs> I guess I'm older than I look. I taught Dick Summers the business. You taught old Dick Summers? Yep. And it was still a business in them days. Of course, motor cars had already been around a while and all them tractors. But there were still plenty of horses. Like the deliveries in the town and work on the farm. But you look like such a young man. Well, uh, these days there ain't much work. You can pick up some money getting connected with a racetrack or on a couple of estates like this one, where the rich folks have stables. Has my wife already discussed your pay and other arrangements? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Cantwell, and uh, I find everything satisfactory. Very well. That'll be all. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cantwell. Louise? Yes? I want you to fire him. Ben, why? I want you to fire him. Well, not unless you tell me why. I can't. Oh, yes, you can. I know you. You have sudden automatic responses. You're a creature of violent first impressions. What have you got against that man? I said I don't know. Something bothers you. Try to analyze it. Why? Isn't it enough that it bothers me? Tell me. All right. This is as good a reason as any. I... I don't like the farm people. But he's not... Well, obviously, he's very lame. You see how he walks. You hear how he walks. Can this be your conscience? Suppose he's a veteran, and he was maimed by one of your instruments of destruction. For the last time, I am not ashamed of what I'm doing. It's work that is legitimate, necessary, and moral. It's sanctioned by the law. Why do you protest so much? Because I... Oh, forget it. Do you really want to know why I hired him? I hired this one because of his name. His name? Yes. It was just too delicious to resist. His name is Vulcan. Vulcan? Vulcan was one of the ancient gods. The god of fire. He was actually a blacksmith. He made all the weapons for the other gods. Are you sure you're all right? I think he was married to Venus. Now, Louise, what kind of the nonsense... marriage didn't work. She was always cheating on him. All right. All right, you've had your little joke. Let him catch up with whatever shoeing he has to do, and then let him go. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. 
Mr. Vulcan. Oh, morning, Miss Cantwell. How long have you been doing this, Mr. Vulcan? Oh, uh, long, long time. Uh, They've always been smiths. Did you know the ancient god Vulcan was a blacksmith? <laughs> no, ma'am. I, I never was much on all them heathen gods. And you never heard of Vulcan? <laughs> I thought there might be a relationship. No, ma'am. I can't say that I know of any. Mr. Vulcan, may I ask you a, a question? Well, you go right ahead, ma'am. How did, how did you happen to become lame? Oh, I... Well, I, I don't know. You don't? <laughs> no, ma'am. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to pry. Oh, it's all right, ma'am. I... Uh, well, I understand my father dropped me when I was a small baby or something like that. Mr. Cantwell, as you may know, has endowed a great many hospitals and medical research centers. Oh, I've made the rounds of all of them, ma'am, and... The verdict is, this is how I have to be for the rest of my life. Well, if there's a breakthrough, somehow, then then you will be able to benefit. We'll see to that. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I must say, you and Mr. Cantwell are the best folks I ever worked for. Did you fire that blacksmith? That, uh, what's his name, Vulcan? Joe Vulcan? No. No? But I thought we agreed. We didn't agree. You merely suggested it. But he intrigues me. Why? I told you. He's a blacksmith named Vulcan. So was the ancient god, Vulcan. He's lame. So was the ancient god. Oh, please. Oh, this gets better. I asked him why he was lame. Do you know what he answered? How would I know? Oh, you really are touchy. He said when he was an infant, his father had dropped him. Oh, for crying out loud. No, no, you must listen to this. Vulcan's father, or at least his mother's husband, I'm trying to be delicate about this, uh, was Jupiter. Oh, who cares? His mother gave birth to Vulcan, and Jupiter was so angry that he seized the child and hurled him from Olympus down to the earth below. And that's why Vulcan became lame. Do you see the similarities? What I don't see is what you're really driving at. Well, they say the ancient gods would, from time to time, visit the Earth, disguised as mortals. Are you trying to tell me that this, this silly-looking oaf that is employed in our stables is actually an ancient Greek god called Vulcan? His Roman name was Vulcan. His Greek name was Hephaestus. All right, all right. Quit trying to prove how smart you are. Just answer one question. If it's true, what is he doing here working for us, this god of yours? Oh, with very few exceptions. A visit from the gods usually meant a great deal of trouble for the people he called on. What kind of trouble? I, uh, I just hope we never find out. The hard way. Coincidence. Coincidence. And what is Louise's rationale for saying that their latest employee is actually Vulcan, the ancient god of the blacksmiths? Well, you heard it. And it's all circumstantial evidence. And you know what the philosopher said about that, don't you? Some circumstantial evidence is very strong, like when you find a trout in the milk. What will we find in Act Two? time something is made by man, every time man works a raw material into a finished product, every time man transforms nature from a work of God into a work of his own, man approaches something that is divine. For man is now doing what only God or the gods could do originally, and that is create. However, sometimes man being man, and nothing really more, Let's all of this creativity get out of hand. I thought the weekend went rather well. Did you? And I must compliment you, Louise. You were a superb hostess. Tell me, did you sell the fireball? 
What did you say? I said, did you sell the fireball? Uh, uh, don't ever mention that word. Nowhere. To no one. It's top secret. Really? How did you find out? How did I find out? There were these papers lying on top of the dresser. Oh, oh. Well, that's... Uh, that's uh, inexcusable. Well, you have to read those papers somewhere. If I'm that absent-minded, it means I'd better not take papers home anymore. Besides, you talk in your sleep. Then I'll have to sleep alone. <laughs> No sacrifice is too great to make for your country. Tell me, what did you learn about about that weapon whose name you must never mention? That it's called unmentionable because you merely hang it in the sky over an enemy city and poof, the whole place is burned to cinders in minutes. Louise, you must never breathe a single... I suppose single... you're proud of yourself, aren't you? Louise! I will not get into this argument again. Would you rather other countries had it and we didn't? Oh, why don't we chuck the whole thing, Ben? And just enjoy life from now on. It's easy enough for you to say that, but I have responsibilities. Well, you are now going to give me what I have classified as speech number 16B. Louise, listen to me. We have just developed the, the, the thing in the lab. If it's so hush-hush, and I know too much now... Why tell me more? I have to tell someone. We can do it. We can make this thing, but we don't know why. What do you mean, you don't know why? We don't know why it should work. All we know is we can make it. So, so what's the problem? Well, there isn't any problem. Then why do you sound so upset? Because I, I feel maybe, maybe we shouldn't turn this thing out. This time we... We may have blundered into something that's more than just a discovery. This this thing is part of the process of how matter itself was created. It's almost something beyond the capability of human understanding. Then drop it. Drop it? Yes. Put a stop to the project. Forget it ever existed. You're crazy. I'm crazy? Did you hear what you were just telling me? Well... Sometimes I just have to talk. But you never spoke like that before. Maybe, maybe it's because I had a crazy dream. Aren't you the one who says you never dream? In the ordinary way, I don't. It's your fault. <laughs> you have a dream and it's my fault. Yes, because you've been filling my head with that nonsense. What nonsense? About Vulcan. What are you talking about? You know, Vulcan, the ancient god of, of fire. Ah, uh, I see. I'm to blame. Well, aren't you? No. And I can prove it. When you saw Joe Vulcan, for the very first time, you instinctively reacted against him. Before you even knew who he was. Well? Well, there's some people you dislike at sight. That's all. You didn't need me to be afraid of him. I'm not afraid of him. I, I just don't like him. And I insist that you fire him. Well, if that's how you feel about it, why don't you just go down to the stables and fire him yourself? All right. I will. Oh, morning, Mr. Cantwell. Lawkin, I'm going to have to let you go. Yes, sir, Mr. Cantwell. Uh, when do you want me to leave? Well... I want you to finish up around here. Uh, take two or three weeks. Yes, sir. Uh, Vulcan, I... I don't want you to feel badly. No, sir. It's nothing personal. You can see that for yourself. We, we don't require a full-time blacksmith. That's true. And if you need references for your next job... I, uh... I don't think there's going to be another job. Oh, don't say that. Good men are hard to find. Especially in the kind of work you do. Uh, no, sir. I, uh, I think I'll quit roaming all around the country. You, uh, may have done me a favor. A favor? Yes, sir. I don't spend nearly enough time with my wife. Oh. I, uh, well, uh, she's a, a beautiful woman. Really? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. An ugly cuss like him, how do you ever get a beautiful woman to even look at him, much less marry him. Oh, I didn't mean to imply that. Oh, it's all right. I'm used to it. Funny. 
A lot of folks say she... Well, that she steps out on me. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, well, I... But uh, even if it's true, it's my fault. What do you mean? Because I'm also being untrue to her. Uh -huh. Oh, not in that way. But I'm still cheating on her. How? Oh. Well, I'm giving time and energy that you might say belongs to her, to, to my job. You see what I mean? A lot of fellows do that. And then they wonder why their wives find something else or someone else. Well, sir, if you don't want me on the place, I'll be going. So you did it. It's economically unfeasible to have a full-time blacksmith. The real reason you fired him is because you're afraid of him. Afraid? Louise, have you ever had a conversation with this man? Of course, I've spoken to him. I mean a sustained conversation. Well, I... This is the most frightened, timid, milk toast. He's quiet, I'll admit that. And you thought he was one of the ancient gods. I said it was possible. Never. They were men. I mean, beings of, of, of strength. He's so ineffectual. I'll tell you what would amuse you. He said maybe being fired wouldn't be the worst thing. It would give him more time to spend with his wife. Why, isn't that a sensible statement? And it turns out he has a beautiful wife. Just like Falcon. And maybe it would cure her from, as he put it, stepping out on him. Falcon's wife was Venus. She certainly had her affairs. Maybe she still does. Who can say that these gods are dead? Or that they even existed. Then you can say what you like. I still believe he is the ancient god Vulcan. And that he chose to visit our house. Why? To get you to do something. Like what? I don't know. Then why didn't he come out with it? Maybe he did. Maybe you just didn't want to understand. If he's a god, why does he have to beat about the bush? Lucky Land Casino, asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Why not just hurl a thunderbolt or something and say, do it my way or else? Because a god wants things to happen, not by threats, but through enlightenment. The thunderbolts are only a last resort. What am I supposed to be enlightened about? I don't know. What's bothering you? Hello, Senator. Sit down. Ah, morning, Ben. I'm sorry to be late. Oh, it's all right. Our starting time is whenever we decide to show up at the first tea. Well, oh, shall we order? <clears throat> no, no, I'm on the diet. Say, that's a pretty big spread on you in the post. I was afraid of that. They go all the way back to the 30s to find a phrase to describe me. Merchant of death. <laughs> Actually, it's a rather uh, philosophical article. Philosophy in the post? Well, as a matter of fact, the uh, writer calls you Vulcan. Vulcan? Yeah, you know, the ancient god of fire. Where does he come off with... Well, he calls you the modern god of fire. <laughs> you must admit there's a basis for it. <laughs> a basis? Well, you're perfecting a thing for us, and it's uh, almost supernatural, is it? Is this Senator Sullivan talking? Oh, come on, Dan. Whatever happened to your sense of humor? I'm too busy to have one. <laughs> they even write that you run the risk of being punished for hubris. You just lost me. Oh, well, the hubris is a kind of uh, defiance of the gods. You know, by taking under oneself one of their attributes. By challenging them in their own speciality. 
Is that a fact? Oh, yes, yes, yes. There was a, a girl named Arachne in ancient Greece. Uh, now, she claimed she was the finest weaver in the world. Uh, this annoyed the goddess Athena no end. I can't believe this conversation. And, well, you see, Athena held a distinction for herself. So, poor Arachne, for her hubris, was punished. Now, do you know how? I can't even begin to imagine. She was turned into a spider. Oh. <laughs> Am I going to be turned into a spider, too? Well, you haven't annoyed Athena. <laughs> Your problem is with Vulcan. Oh, I see. And since you've set yourself up as a, a master of fire, he uh, just might decide to have at you that way. Need I tell you, I am terrified. Oh, and also on personal level, uh, you may have affronted him. What did I do now? Now he was married to the most beautiful of all women, Venus, and your wife... Uh, oh, come on. She's a good-looking woman, but... No, 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 don't say that. Louise is beautiful. You know what I think? You're trying to psych me. You have to have an edge. But it won't do any good, Senator. I'll still beat you on the course today. Let's see. This marks the third night in a row that you're home. How do I win? If I'm detained somewhere on business, I get complaints because I'm never home. When I stay home, I still get flack. I was just making a comment. Did you read that article about me in the Post? Oh, I... I didn't want to mention it because I know those, those things annoy you. I had my secretary clip it out for me, and I've got it right here. The vengeance of Vulcan. It's stated as a question. What annoys me is that they're factually inaccurate. Oh? You see, Vulcan, assuming there's a basis for this nonsense, Vulcan doesn't have a vengeful bone in his body. He was the kindliest of all the gods. He wasn't jealous of anyone. He didn't mind what anyone did to him or said about him. So, he wouldn't take vengeance on anyone. And how do you know all this? Because I did some research. Why? Why should you take time from your busy schedule? Because to... I have to set certain people straight. About what? You know, if this conversation were ever made public, both of us would be prime candidates for a sanitarium. Well, so, even if I did have the hubris to offend Vulcan... He wouldn't do anything about it anyway. Oh. Well. Now, do you feel better? Who says I'm feeling badly to begin with? Oh, I'll get it. No, no, I'm right here. Hey, guess who? Senator. Uh, oh. Oh, uh, hello, Ben. I know your voice anywhere. Uh, uh, ben, uh, Ben, I, I just called to let you know that uh, you can expect to have clear sailing in the Senate committee tomorrow. That's great. I certainly do appreciate it. Yeah, well, I'm glad. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. That's funny. What is? The senator. He called to tell me about the committee hearings. Well, doesn't he usually? Except this morning at the club. I told him I'd be out of town. Well, maybe he forgot. He hasn't forgotten anything since the day he was born. No, he thought I wouldn't be home tonight. And that's why he called. Well, a kind of light begins to dawn in the eyes of Big Ben Cantwell, tycoon extraordinary. And he looks at his beautiful, desirable wife. And all of a sudden, it occurs to him that perhaps the phone call from the fun-loving senator was not really for him after all. This little cloud will assume larger proportions when I return shortly with Act Three. Are we playthings of the gods? Probably. How else can you explain the absolute madness of the world we live in? There was an ancient god named Vulcan god of the forge and flame. And like his fellows, he likes to walk the earth. That is, according to legend. Well, don't laugh at legends. You can never tell when you might need one. It's quite possible Senator Sullivan wasn't calling me at all. 
Oh, really? He may have been calling you. Me? Whatever for? What reason does he have to call any woman? I wouldn't know. Louise, what is there between you and the senator? I consider that question an insult. Are you part of the senator's collection? Another scalp that hangs from his belt? Another notch on his gun? I'm afraid you'll have to remain forever in suspense. Is this why I get such favorable treatment from the committee? Now, you listen to me, Louise. You listen to me, Ben. For 15 years, we've been little more than strangers. That's not true. How often have we seen each other? I've been busy. And I've been busy, too. With what? With whom? I don't think that's your business. You're my wife, and I'm your husband. It's been a long time since we took those roles seriously. What is there between you and Senator Sullivan? Why don't you ask him? I will. Everybody's probably laughing at me while my back is turned. She's stepping out. Stepping out. Oh, listen to me. I'm talking like that idiot Joe Vulcan. But who am I to call him an idiot? I'm in the same boat. We both wear the same hat. Look out! Look out! Watch where you're going, you idiot! Look out! It was a miracle, Louise. A miracle. You say he's all right, Dr. Corman. The car was totaled. All he has is a few scratches. Are you sure? Positive. Now come inside. See for yourself. Is it all right to see him? Come on, Louise. It was such a terrible crash, I can hardly believe. Ben? Hello, Louise, dear. How do you feel? Well, uh, I'm all right, except I... I have this terrible pain in my legs. Dr. Corman, you said... Yeah, I know what he says. But I feel this pain. Now, Ben, we've examined you thoroughly. You know that. Yes, Doctor. There's absolutely no sign of any injury. No fracture, no sprains, no torn ligaments, no swelling. I understand, Doctor, but I have this pain. Doctor, are you sure? Not only am I sure, but every specialist we called in is also sure. I don't... I don't like to contradict anyone, but since it's my pain, I'm... I'm the only one who can really be sure. Louise. Ben. I'm home. It uh, was a very busy day. Ben, I... I think we should have this out. Why do you limp? Why... Well, it should be obvious. My legs hurt. But the doctors say The that... doctors are simply mistaken. But Ben... I, I wish I could oblige everyone. I hate to cause anyone distress. Ben, what are you talking about? Yeah, well, it's just that my work itself is so turbulent. It deals with elemental forces that... Well, I like my personal affairs to be calm, peaceful. What has come over you, Ben? I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing's come over me. What kind of a game are you trying to play with me? Game? Look, when you got into your car and you decided to confront Senator Sullivan that that night... I don't think we have to talk about that. Oh, we do. I, I admit that he and I had seen each other a few times, but... Louise, dear, please. I, I, I don't wish to discuss this. It, it isn't necessary. But then... If you'll excuse me, I... Where are you going? To the forge. The forge? Yes, you know, the factory. Don't go. What is it? You called it the forge. Of course. Why? I'll tell you why. Because that's what Vulcan called his workshop. Vulcan? Yes, Vulcan. Now I know what's happened. You actually believe you're Vulcan. Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? You've affected his limp. My feet hurt ever since that accident. And, and you can even accept the fact that your wife might be having an affair. I, is that who you want to be? Is that what you want to be, Vulcan? Louise, darling, 
Maybe you'd better see Dr. Corman. If you want to be a god, be a Jupiter, an Apollo. You're not well, and I wish I knew what was making you so unhappy. Look, I don't want to be married to Vulcan. Vulcan? Whatever makes you think that? You're married to me. You're married to Ben Cantwell. But you're not Ben Cantwell any longer. I, I got here as quickly as I could, sir, but uh, there was all this traffic. Uh, I'm sorry to spoil your holiday, Lewis. No, no, that's all right. But I feel this is the day we can finish. Finish? Yes, Lewis. Today, here, now. On, on fireball, sir? Is everything set in the firing room? Yes, sir, but... But? What's the problem? Oh, I, uh... I thought we'd agreed to abandon the project. Why? Because it uh, was really beyond our uh, our capability, uh, our human capability to control. Yeah, the final formula, there is no known mathematics to express it. And furthermore, we can't even conceive the formula. We can't? Uh, here, I'll start, I'll start the computer. Yeah, see, all, all the known data has already been fed into it. And now, uh, watch. You see, sir? Suddenly, the computer stops. Well, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Now, we're committed to deliver this this weapon to the armed forces. But only if experimentally we could... We can. But I don't see how. Start to build up the temperatures in the firing room. What, what formulas are you... I don't need a formula. Do as I tell you, Lewis. I, look, I, know, I know you're a great one for intuition, sir, but this time... Do as I tell you, Lewis. Come in. Afternoon, Miss Cantwell. Oh. Oh, it's you, Mr. Falcon. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Cantwell said to take a couple of three weeks to get all the work done around the stables. Well, it's, uh, it's finished. You're leaving us, are you? Yes, ma'am. Uh, come to say goodbye. Well, good luck, Mr. Falcon. I wish you the best. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Same to you. Goodbye. Wait. Wait. Well, what is it, ma'am? Who... Who are you? Well, I'm just Joe Vulcan. That's not true. You are the god, Vulcan. Who? <laughs> that just ain't cool. That's right. It's not true anymore. But it was true, and I can prove it. Prove what, Miss Cantwell? I can prove it by something you just did. Well, what did I do? Uh, come with me. Please, come with me. Ben. Oh, Louise, dear. Huh? How did you get in here? I'm your wife, remember? And uh, Mr. Vulcan. Well, well, yeah. It beats me, sir. She just dragged me here. Ready for firing, sir. Uh, ben, listen to me. Destroy that machine, that, that device, whatever it is. Darling. Uh... Because if you don't, then, then you really become Vulcan. Then you really acquire his full powers. Is that how you want to live? Look at him. Louise, I'm very busy. You don't want to be Vulcan. You'll hate it. Immortality becomes a terrible burden after a while. The gods themselves grow tired of eternal life. That is why they, they walk the earth. To find someone who can lift the burden from them. And that someone becomes the god, don't you see? That's the true nature of immortality. What does that have to and do with... And Vulcan has found you. He has given you all his characteristics. His, his talent, his, his meekness. It's not too late. Give them back. Give what back? Don't finish the fireball. You yourself said that the final step of the formula was beyond human comprehension. But once you comprehend it, you will become more than human. Mr. Vulcan, you know I'm speaking the truth. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I don't know nothing of a kind. I said he gave you everything, Ben. Mr. Vulcan, please walk to the door. But why? Walk to the door, please. Stop. See, Ben? See? What, what do you want me to see? 
He doesn't limp anymore. His walk is normal. How do you account for that, Mr. Vulcan? Oh, I, I guess it's a, a miracle, huh? I said he gave you everything, Ben. He even gave you his limp. Ready for firing, sir. Throw on the A switch. The B switch. No, 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 don't. You don't want to be Vulcan. Now, my dear. If you're to live like Vulcan, I'll have to live like Venus. I don't want that. Will you want me to wrong other men in your face? The senator, the admiral, e- e- even your assistant here. Louise. I'll do it. Because I won't be able to help myself. And you won't be able to stand me. You'll, you'll prowl the earth to find someone to take your place. Sir, if we don't fire now. Ready. Don't, Ben. Then you'll know too much. You'll become the god who knows too much. Vulcan. And that's why he limps and staggers. It's not the injury to his feet. It's the weight of knowledge he must carry. He knows more than any of them. He knows how to make and, and build. Oh, turn off that switch. Turn it off, Ben. You... You heard her, Louis. Turn off the switch. Ben. Ben. I turned them off, but nothing happened. The reaction could have gone too far. We, we, we can be destroyed in here, sir. The whole world can be destroyed. What are we going to do? I don't know. I... I said it's beyond human comprehension. Maybe, maybe it'll just stop itself. Mr. Vulcan, please, stop it. What are you talking to him for? You know why. Mr. Vulcan. Oh. What? What's the matter? My, my legs, I, I can hardly stand straight. My legs hurt me again. Listen, it stopped. I guess you were right, Mr. Cantwell. It just stopped by itself. We could never understand it. Thank you, Mr. Vulcan. And I think I... I'd best be leaving. Ben. Ben, look. He's limping again. And look at you. You're... You're standing straight. <laughs> it any way you like. Chacun a so good, as our friends in France would say. Do the gods walk the earth and look for their replacements? Is that what happened to Ben Cantwell? Or was it merely a psychological seizure? Think about it, and I shall return shortly. ancestors looked upon the gods as supernatural beings who knew everything. But now, we are starting to do what only the gods themselves could do. Little by little, we seem to be stripping the veil away from all the mysteries of life and death. And so, some say, the gap narrows. But is this also human frailty? Outward appearances to the contrary notwithstanding. Is the gap really widening? In any event, let there be no gap at all between you and us here seven times each week. Our cast included Kim Hunter, Hugh Marlowe, Earl Hammond, and Guy Sorrell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Tonight's Mystery Theater was also brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less. The preceding program was furnished by CBS Radio. Dial is set for news with John Scott reporting at 8 o'clock. I'm Barry Farber, writer for News. Walter Kerr not only treats silent movies, he brings them roaring back to a brand new life. Right here on the Barry Farber Show, WOR, New York. 
Democrats. Are- Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.